Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. They've asked me to say a few words, and I will uh, try to be brief. Uh, thank you uh, both to, uh, to John and Paul for uh, that uh, kind introduction and for those medals. It's uh, uh, deeply appreciated. Lorene and I had a great uh, time on that trip, and I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about it. Greetings to all of you, to obviously to my colleague, the Honorable Joe Oliver, uh, to all of you. I, ju I just want to say this about something that was said in the introduction. I have to tell you that the truth is when I got the word, the phone call came in, that they'd found the Erebus, my immediate reaction was one of surprise. <laughs> so, you know, you know you're a politician when you can confidently predict something but then be surprised when it happens. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, friends, we're here to celebrate, as has already been said, a great Canadian discovery. In fact, really a great discovery for world history, the final resting place of HMS Erebus. Um, so I want to salute all of the uh, colleagues and companions of the 2014 Victoria Strait Expedition. By uncovering this piece of Canadian British global history, you've made history yourselves. Franklin got lost. Many people couldn't find them, and you guys actually did it. So congratulations, a big hand to everyone who was involved in that. Thanks, of course, to the Royal Canadian Geographic Society for organizing this event, to the Royal Ontario Museum for hosting it. Uh, look, a couple of thoughts. First of all, about the man whose ship we found. Uh, also about the significance of the work you're doing. Uh, sometimes I think that uh, when we speak of Sir John Franklin that he has been poorly served by history because he is, of course, uh, widely remembered for the epic failure of this expedition. Uh, but he should also be remembered for what was, in fact, an astonishing life and some heroic successes. Uh, when he was very young, he was with Nelson at Trafalgar. He was at the Battle of New Orleans. He surveyed the coast of Australia. He was governor of Tasmania, and long before his ships entered the Northwest Passage, he had already led two big expeditions to map Canada's north. So uh, Sir John Franklin was actually an incredible individual, a great spirit, striving to the very end for new knowledge and new frontiers, much like you, much like the 2014 Victoria Strait Expedition Team. I remember well how so many of us gathered on Parliament Hill last spring, kicking off the expedition and bringing together, this is what I will really remember about all this, bringing together so many partners. Now I know many have been mentioned today and I know I run the risk in naming so many people that I forget people, but I, I just want to point out the breadth of this. Parks Canada, Ryan Harris, Marc-Andre Bernier, Andrew Campbell, Alan Latourade, Rear Admiral John Newton of the Royal Canadian Navy, Lieutenant Commander Paul Smith and the crew of the HMCS Kingston, uh, Com Commissioner jo Jody Thomas of the Canadian Coast Guard, Captain Bill Noon of the crew of the Sir Wilfrid Laurier, Richard Peterson in the first, and the, and the rest at uh, Defence Research and Development Canada, Dennis Haynes and Scott Youngblood of the Canadian Hyd Hydrographic Service, our friends at the Canadian Space Agency played a role, Tom uh, Zagoon of the Canadian Ice Service, our friends in Nunavut, obviously my colleague, Minister Agluka, historian Louis uh, Kemukak and his wife Josephine, who are with us, as has been mentioned, all the way from, from Joe tonight. Our friends of the government of Nunavut, in particular Douglas Stanton, Jim Balsilli, the Arctic Research Foundation and the crew of the Martin Bergman, Jordi Dalglish and the W. Garfield Weston Foundation, Andrew Prossen, One Ocean's Expedition, and the crew of the One Ocean Voyager. Shell Canada played a role, my good friend Bob Klager, at uh, the government side of that, and of course, our hosts here tonight at the Royal Canadian Geographic Society, especially Andre Prefontaine, Denny Saint-Ange, and John Geiger. Look, uh, I know I run the risk of missing people, um, but my point is when you look at such a broad, diverse group of partners, governmental, non-governmental, community, uh, profit-seeking uh, profit businesses, working hand-in-hand -hand as partners, that is really a metaphor for this country itself, what makes it uh, as successful as we are. Uh, 
I was fortunate to travel uh, briefly through the Northwest Passage with many of you, many of the ones I named and a few others uh, this summer. As I say, I still can't believe I missed the discovery by just a couple of weeks. <laughs> but uh, I will ne never forget, and I don't think Canadians will ever forget, nor will anyone in history anywhere in the world forget those first ghostly images of Erebus preserved on the bottom, nearly whole, in icy perfection, as if by an act of God. What, what a moment. And the fact it was all, this is another metaphor, the fact it was ultimately located using a combination of cutting edge Canadian develop, developed technology and age old Inuit oral history is also another great metaphor for our country. So tonight we celebrate, and I'm really delighted you put on this celebration, uh, but soon the work will begin again. J'ai le plaisir d'annoncer ce soir que les explorations de cette année commenceront dès le mois prochain avec le début des plongées sous la glace pour découvrir les secrets de l'Erebus. In fact, I'm pleased to announce that we're getting an early start, that this year's exploration will begin next month to start unlocking the secrets of Erebus. We will begin dives beneath the ice this spring. Great news. And of course, the, re the search will resume for HMS Terror, which everybody tells me, now that we've got the one, this other one's probably a little deeper water, but we are going to find that one as well, and I have no doubt that is the case. But we should uh, also understand that our search for Franklin ships, this is what it means really to me, it is about more than solving an age-old Canadian-British world mystery. We are also mapping vast areas of undersea territory in the north that have never before been documented. We're expanding the possibilities for navigation and maritime safety and security. We're studying the land and the seas to learn more about our north, its challenges and its possibilities. And indeed, all the while, of course, we are demonstrating our absolute sovereignty over this piece of iconic territory. Are these modern day Franklin expeditions are part of our government's broader northern strategy. They are also part of our country's broader northern narrative and northern identity. We're answering the age old call of the great Canadian North, keeping the faith with the explorers and the adventurers who have gone before us and breaking trails for the generations of Canadians yet to come. So everybody here, I'm not just here to congratulate you for this, but to uh, really um, honor the vital and exciting work that you are all doing. And I know that I speak for all Canadians when I wish you tonight good luck and clear waters for the season ahead. Merci beaucoup. Merci.